comic books are very dramatized, and it's very common for superhero comics to have lots of couples getting together and unfortunately breaking apart. So today I want to take a look at some of the biggest breakups that happen in Marvel Comics and maybe give you a little bit of history about the characters as well. So enjoy. When it comes to superheroes dating around, it seems like Spider-Man is up there at the very top of the list. However, there is no doubt that Mary Jane Watson shined for years as Peter's main love interest. After all, the two even got married in that monumental issue back in 1987. These two would be one of Marvel's biggest couples for 20 years, until it was undone by the infamous One More Day storyline in 2007. Yup, that's the one where a lot of Spider-Man stuff was retconned away by selling their marriage to the demon Mephisto, because Marvel wanted Peter to be a swinging single again, which led to that iconic page, I want your love, I want your marriage. Just like that, Peter and Mary Jane were never married. Oh sure, they still had a long-term relationship, but they just never tied the knot and broke up once the demon smoke cleared. History was changed that Peter missed the wedding day while off saving the day as Spider-Man, and Mary Jane flat out told him that because of it, she couldn't marry Peter unless he gave up being Spidey, which he couldn't. Eventually, this life got to be too much for Mary Jane, and she straight up left. For fans of Peter and Mary Jane being together, though, Marvel is currently putting out a book called The Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows that takes place in an alternate universe containing just that, along with their daughter, Anna Mae Parker. <laughs> Anna Mae. In all seriousness though, I like the book, especially after the time skip, so if that intrigues you, I suggest looking into it. Considering how few openly gay characters exist in mainstream superhero comics, it's always noteworthy when characters enter a same-sex relationship. It's even bigger, however, when there's an on-panel kiss. So let's take a look at the couple that shared Marvel's first male-on-male -male kiss, Shatterstar and Richter. Ever since joining X-Force in the 90s, Shatterstar and Richter were always close, and there was a fair amount of sexual subtext between them, including Shatterstar learning Spanish solely so that he could talk privately with Richter. Let's also not forget the time when Richter took Shatterstar out dancing, which ended with Shatterstar, a bio-engineered being, making it very clear to Richter that he has all of the necessary parts to quote, fully simulate physical human interaction. Fans quickly picked up on all of the undertones and had their patience rewarded with their landmark kiss in 2009 fully confirming their relationship. It was a bold move, but an amazing step forward for LGBT representation in comics. So that's why it's so disappointing that these guys broke up. What's even worse is that we don't really know the reason why. With Richter briefly mentioning it in passing in the Iceman series and immediately hitting on him. You'd think that a couple as groundbreaking as Richter and Shatterstar with all of their buildup over the decades would have their split handled with a little bit of tact and grace, but sadly it wasn't here. Kitty Pride has dated some pretty prominent characters like Colossus and Iceman, but she was straight up engaged to Star-Lord from the Guardians of the Galaxy. Sure, the only real reason this happened was because writer Brian Michael Bendis wants to vicariously date her through his characters, but Kitty and Peter's interactions were actually pretty damn adorable. Besides, you know that this relationship had to be serious when she was willing to literally move to space for him. Unfortunately though, Kitty is a mainstay of the X-Men series, so permanently shipping her off to space wouldn't be the best move if Marvel wanted to keep on making X-Men books, so the two needed a reason to break up. Well, how about Star-Lord becoming president of a galactic empire, getting wrapped up in work, and treating his fiancée like literal garbage? Yeah, that'd be enough grounds for a breakup. Despite this, Kitty and Peter had a bit of a will-they-won't-they -they vibe even after the split, coupled with a few post-breakup hookups. However, when the Guardians temporarily crash-landed on Earth, Kitty stuck around, which pretty much means that this fan-favorite pairing is done for good. Black Panther and Storm are two of Marvel's most well-known black characters, and them getting married was pretty damn monumental. Their relationship was even expanded upon by giving them backstory of how they were childhood lovers back before Storm was worshipped as a goddess in Africa, and well before she joined the X-Men. Their wedding was pretty damn interesting considering that Storm hails from outside of Wakanda, and that T'Challa wasn't going to be taking a queen from the Dora Milaje, the Black Panther's all-female staff of bodyguards that are specifically meant to be a pool of potential mates, as dictated by Wakandan tradition. 
It's also interesting in that the wedding took place smack dab in the middle of the superhuman civil war, and acted as one of the only neutral grounds for heroes on both sides of the Superhuman Registration Act to come together. So what could tear up these childhood sweethearts? How about the destruction of a capital? Yeah, in the Avengers vs. X-Men event, Namor the Submariner was amped up with the power of the Phoenix Force and flooded the capital city of Wakanda. This was an act of war. And since Storm still chose to continue to stand with the X-Men even after this, T'Challa used his power as the King of Wakanda to nullify their marriage then and there, in one of the most heartbreaking scenes of the entire event. Speaking of childhood love, Blackagar Boltagon, aka Black Bolt, is the king of the Inhumans, and although he has multiple wives, the only one that he truly cares about is his second cousin, Medusa. Black Bolt's voice causes massive destruction with even the faintest of sounds, so he was raised in isolation. However, Medusa would often sneak off and communicate with him through a special sign language, which blossomed into love. Black Bolt and Medusa were the face of the royal family, and honestly, the Inhuman series as a whole. But that changed when Black Bolt let off a bomb that unleashed a massive amount of Terrigen mist onto the world and was thought to be dead. Medusa mourned her husband and took over as the ruler of the Inhumans, growing close to and entering into a relationship with Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, in the process. Even when Black Bolt decided to reveal that he was alive the whole time, Medusa was pissed, would not let Black Agar back on the throne, and continued her relationship with Johnny. Since then, Medusa has broken things off with the Human Torch and reconciled with Black Bolt, but at the time of this recording, Medusa and the royal family are off having space adventures, and Black Bolt is trapped in a super prison by his brother Maximus, so the state of their relationship is a bit uncertain at the moment. Scott Summers and Jean Grey were the couple of the X-Men, and no matter the universe or the medium, their love almost always shows up in some way, shape, or form. Now, don't get me wrong, their love is also super complicated, what with all of the clones, cosmic entities, time travel, cheating, and death that's involved, because comics. That last one is important, though. Death. It seems like every time that Jean dies, or seemingly dies, Scott instantly hooks up with another girl, most prominently Emma Frost, who Scott once cheated on Jean with. Okay, so technically it wasn't physical cheating and it only happened in Emma's mind, which she brought Scott into, but despite what you might think about fantasies being cheating or not, I feel like consciously hooking up in a telepath's mindscape is a different animal entirely. Anyway, this isn't much of a true breakup since they did stay married until Jean's long-term death in 2004, but even though that she is currently in the process of coming back to life, again, at the time of this recording, it doesn't really matter since Cyclops is also dead at the time of this recording. Regardless, this couple's life was full of trials and tribulations, so they pretty much deserved a spot on this list regardless, especially with how quickly after Jean's death that Scott went running into Emma's arms, on top of Jean's grave, no less. The original Ant-Man and Wasp, Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, were one of the first power couples at Marvel Comics, and they were even founding members of the Avengers. Despite this, things got… weird around the time that Hank took up the new identity of Yellow Jacket. So one day in the lab, Hank accidentally dropped a vial of various gases that brought on a hardcore case of schizophrenia, which caused him to take on the Yellow Jacket persona. When he appeared before the Avengers, Yellow Jacket claimed to have killed Hank, kidnapped Janet, and kissed her. But this kiss was enough to reveal Hank's true identity to her. Janet straight up marries Yellow Jacket, thinking that it would help snap Hank out of this new personality, but it doesn't. It would take a villain named Ringmaster attacking them at their wedding to do that. Regardless, Hank decided to keep the Yellow Jacket persona and continued to be happily married. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. Hank has always been pretty mentally unstable, and this got him sidelined on the Avengers. In an attempt to get back in their good graces, Hank built a robot to attack the team with a secret weak spot that only he knew of, hoping that he could save the Avengers and be welcomed back. When Janet objected to this plan, Hank struck her. Now, we've discussed it on the channel before, but to briefly touch on it again, this is completely unacceptable. However, the writer Jim Shooter has stated that this was meant to be depicted as Hank throwing up his hands in anger and accidentally hitting Janet, but the artist misinterpreted it. Again, not condoning domestic abuse in the slightest, just giving some backstory. Regardless, the robot was stronger than Hank had anticipated, so it was Janet that ended up saving the day, and she divorced him instantly afterwards, which 
yeah, that makes total sense and was a great move on her part. Now, sure, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage might be the most prominent interracial couple over at Marvel, but for a long time, it was Iron Fist and Misty Knight that were in the spotlight. In fact, the two of them shared the first interracial kiss at Marvel Comics in Marvel Team Up number 64 in 1977. I personally have been a major fan of these two as a couple, since they are just plain adorable and work really, really well together. That's why it was super exciting when Misty was revealed to be pregnant with Danny's child, and then seeing the two of them getting engaged, but sadly, that wouldn't last. Apparently, this pregnancy was a false positive brought on by Danny's Iron Fist Chi, and this severely crippled their relationship to the point of them parting ways entirely. There's no doubt that this hurt fans, but I do want to give props to the emotional scene that is Danny and Misty moving out, since it is incredibly realistic. Danny mentions that when you move in, it is a joy to merge your books, movies, records, etc. into one massive collection, but when breaking up, separating them can feel like surgery. As someone who has actually gone through this a couple of times himself, it really played on my heartstrings and only made this hurt more. If you're torn up by any of these breakups, then don't worry, because comic books are basically soap operas. There's constant death and resurrection, reveals, breakups and hookups, reconciliation, etc. So give it some time, maybe they'll get back together. But hey, if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? In fact, if you need a pick-me-up after all of these breakups, then why not watch our video on Marvel Comic Hookups? It's our most popular video, and it's not hard to understand why. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and maybe I'll see you next time.